Today we're going to talk about the guy who is currently tied for 4th in the NHL in goals, tied for 29th in points, 18th in shots on goal, and 11th in Corsi 4 percentage. While he's definitely not the star of his team, heck he's not even close to being their second star of their team, Zach Hyman has still been such a force for the Edmonton Oilers, this season especially. After Saturday's win, the Oilers are now on a record-breaking 13-game winning streak, and Hyman has been a huge part of this turnaround. I keep seeing this narrative online that Hyman only gets points because he plays with McDavid, and Hyman's only a power play merchant, which is far from true, as he said, it's tied for 5th in even strength goals in the NHL, so I figured we'd discuss how Hyman got to this point, what makes him so effective, and why superstars like Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, and Austin Matthews rave about playing with him. As always guys, like, comment, and subscribe for me so that we can keep making fun hockey content together. Zach Hyman certainly had an interesting path to the NHL. Zach grew up in a hockey family in Toronto with four brothers and a father who was the chairman of the OJHL or Ontario Junior Hockey League. His father Stuart, a real estate mogul in the greater Toronto area, actually owned over 90, I repeat 90 minor hockey teams at one point, before the Greater Toronto Hockey League stepped in in 2008 to stop his purchasing streak. Nonetheless, after playing minor hockey in the GTA, Zach spent three years with the Hamilton Red Wings in the OJHL, another team that his dad owned. His first year was solid with 37 points in 49 games, while his second year he was the captain recording 35 goals and 40 assists in 49 games and subsequently being drafted in the fifth round of the 2010 NHL entry draft by the Florida Panthers. At the same time, he also committed to play college hockey for Princeton, but we'll get to that shortly. Then, his third year in the OJ was simply dominant, taking home the 2011 Canadian Junior A Player of the Year award and the most sportsmanlike award after recording 42 goals, 60 assists for 102 points in just 43 games. So following a great junior career, Hyman was set to go to college. However, the Princeton coach he committed to play for, Guy Godowski, switched to Penn State, so Hyman decommitted prior to the most recent season and went to the University of Michigan instead, which is where we really started to see his game grow under the legendary Red Berenson. He had 9 points as a freshman and 9 points again as a sophomore, but in his junior year at Michigan, he ramped up to 17 points on a stacked squad led by JT Comfer and Andrew Kopp. Then in his senior year, Hyman played on a line with freshman phenom Dylan Larkin, who was amazing in his first and only year of college hockey. Larkin tallied 47 points in his 35 games, finishing second on the team behind our guy Hyman, who racked up 54 points in just 37 games, finishing as a top 10 finalist for the Hobie Baker. So now Hyman had wrapped up his time in the NCAA, but still hadn't signed with the Florida Panthers. He informed the team that he would not sign with them, and the Panthers subsequently traded his rights to his hometown Toronto Maple Leafs in exchange for Greg McKaig. Now we've seen this more recently with Jimmy Vc, Adam Fox, or even Cutter Gochi a few weeks ago, but at the time, not many players were doing this, so there was a lot of narratives about Hyman following this deal. You can paint the picture yourself here. He must be an entitled kid because he grew up in a very wealthy family in Toronto who decommits from his college team and then won't play for the Panthers in the NHL and demands a trade to his hometown Leafs, so he must be a lazy, self-righteous player who doesn't try and plays selfishly. But despite that narrative, the second that fans watched just one shift of Zach Hyman playing hockey, they knew that wasn't the case and that most certainly wasn't his play style. Hyman signed with Toronto and began his pro career with the Toronto Marlies of the American Hockey League for the 2015-2016 season. After tallying 37 points in 59 games, he was called up to the big squad near the end of the year. He ended up playing 16 NHL games, recording 6 points, a pretty impressive debut, before being sent back down to the AHL to help the Marlies go on a Calder Cup run, where he played great even though the team fell short. Now from that point forth, Zach Hyman never played another AHL game, as he proved himself to be a great player in the NHL. He spent his first few years in Toronto playing alongside young phenoms Austin Matthews and William Nylander. A lot of times early in his career, Toronto fans would complain about the lack of puck skills or finishing ability when either of his line mates would make a great play and Hyman wouldn't capitalize on it. Yet through thick and thin, head coach Mike Babcock praised Hyman for his work ethic and constantly stated that those chances would have never even happened if it wasn't for Hyman's forechecks and puck retrievals, which was true. On a stat sheet, 28 points in a complete rookie season isn't too crazy 
crazy, but the fact that he was trusted to be on that line instead of a responsible veteran forward, the fact that Babcock had him killing penalties, he actually set the Leafs rookie record with four shorthanded goals too, and the fact he finished 25th in Selkie voting, all spoke to the well-roundedness and tenacity of Hyman's game. Babcock once said to James Myrtle, Zach Hyman, we'd love to have a guy like him on each line, but sadly, they just don't make them like that. After that first full rookie season, Hyman signed a four-year, $2.25 million per year deal that summer, and his next season was better offensively, tallying 15 goals, 25 assists for 40 points. In his third full season, he took another step forward, tallying 20 goals and 41 points in just 71 games, and then in his fourth full season, again, a higher point per game pace with 37 points in 51 games despite missing the start of the year due to ACL surgery. Hyman wore an A as an assistant captain for the Leafs in 2020-2021, again stepping his game up with 33 points in 43 games. His puck skills and even just his hockey IQ had increased significantly over his NHL career so far, but with Toronto's cap crunch, real Leaf fans knew that this was the last they'd see of Zach Hyman in Toronto. The rumor has been that general manager Kyle Dubas did in fact offer Hyman an eight-year deal to stay in Toronto, but the Oilers swept in and outbid them, landing the pesky winger on a seven-year, $38.5 million deal worth $5.5 million per season. Twitter was ablaze when this deal was inked, as fans from other markets claimed he wasn't worth that and that his stats were so inflated by playing with the likes of Matthews and Nylander and Mitch Marner, but that didn't seem to deter the Oilers, who felt Hyman could be McDavid's new puck hound. His first year in Edmonton was a little slow at times, and even Oilers fans started to worry about the seven-year deal, but Hyman fought through it and tallied 54 points in 76 games, a new career high even though it was a lower point per game pace than the prior two seasons had been. Then, in his second year in Alberta, Hyman really settled in. 36 goals, 83 points, smashing his career highs in both categories and finishing over a point per game for the first time since his senior year at Michigan. His teammates were raving about his play and his determination to win pucks and Oilers fans, they were fully sold on Hyman. So now this season, as I mentioned at the beginning, he's been on a mission. Heck, he might crack 50 goals. He currently sits at 28 goals, 17 assists for 45 points in 41 games. That puts him at a 1.10 points per game pace compared to 1.05 from last year's career best, but the goals are the big jump, currently at 0.68 goals per game compared to 0.46 per game last year. The one wonderful tool that is NHL Edge has Zach Hyman in the 99th percentile in goals, 96th percentile in shots on goal, and the 93rd percentile in shooting percentage, all of which are career bests. So I know what you're thinking. It's totally possible that we see his 17% shooting percentage regress to his average and a more league average 13% or so in the second half, especially considering he has three hat tricks already, only trailing Austin Matthews, his former line mate. But the way he's been playing lately, it honestly could stay this high he's been so good around the net especially. There's the background on Zach Hyman, the person and his trajectory as a player. So what is it that makes him such an effective player today? Well, he got his full-time role in the NHL in 2016-2017, and now in his eighth full season, he has gotten better every single year except for one. Literally, his points per game rate has gone up every single season except for one when it ticked down ever so slightly in his first year in Edmonton. This is a player that works his butt off, and I think this continued steady offensive growth perfectly encapsulates that. But in all honesty, it's his play without the puck that makes Zach Hyman so effective. Ryan Whitney, former NHL D-man and star of the Spit and Chicklets podcast, often refers to Sidney Crosby, his former teammate, as a first-line grinder, referencing the way he battles in the corners, the way he uses his lower body to protect the puck, and the way that he fights his way to the front of the net. Now, I'm not here to compare Zach Hyman to the iconic Sidney Crosby, but I think a lot of that description applies to Hyman as well. My friends know that I call Hyman a super grinder, a guy who has the speed and skill to at least keep up with the best players on the top lines and the best players in the world like McDavid, Dreisaitl, and Matthews, but a guy who mucks and grinds and leads the forecheck and wins every puck battle like a true grinder would. Hyman's forechecking ability is one of the best in the league. Heck, Mike Babcock even said it was the best in 2017, one of his first years in the NHL. He's so, so good at reading breakout attempts, timing and angling his opponents, and then pouncing when he's ready. People hear that and assume that he's leading the league in takeaways, but a lot of the time I notice with Hyman that it's not him who's coming out of the corner with the puck, but he was the first man in on the forecheck, perfectly tied up the defender's stick, and either kicked the puck loose or at least tied up the defender for F2 or F3 to come join him and pick it up. He truly is just a natural puck hound and a player who works 
works his butt off every single shift. There's never been a question about Hyman's effort or competitiveness because he reminds you of it night in, night out. Former linemate Austin Matthews recently said to Terry Koshan of the Toronto Star that Hyman's a guy who lives at the net. He's one of the hardest working guys I've ever played with, and his ability to get open and work and battle in front of the net and capitalize on those opportunities is so significant. That's high praise from Matthews, and current line mate Connor McDavid told Koshan that not all free agent signings work out, but Zach has been above and beyond anyone's expectations, really from the moment he got here in Edmonton. So you may be wondering, what changed for Hyman when he got to Edmonton from Toronto? A lot of things, I'm sure, but the two that really matter the most in my eyes are A, he's getting time playing net front on one of the best power plays in the league, and B, McDavid plays a lot more of a north-south speed game than Matthews and Co. did in Toronto. You can see in this clip here, Hyman is definitely a beneficiary of power play time with McDavid. Winning the battles around the crease and then popping open when defenders overcommit to McDavid has set Hyman up with a lot of goals like this one. But as I said earlier, he's fifth in the NHL in even strength goals, so it's not like he's only padding his stats on this elite power play with Bouchard and McDavid and Dreisaitl, Etc. Hyman was quoted by Mark Spector of Sportsnet saying, I'm just trying to find an angle to see if McDavid is going to shoot it, maybe like a basketball backboard and give him an extra two feet to hit off of. Or if he makes a heck of a pass that I can kind of tip in, whether it hits my body or goes straight in or lays there for someone else, it works. When I first got in the league, everybody would just stand in front of the goalie, but you've got to be more creative and find ways to get open too. It's evident to me that Hyman understands how to get open while also owning the front of the net and blocking the goalie's line of vision. Again, not comparing him to Crosby, but that's something that Crosby does so well. Take away the goalie's eyes for one second, and then pop, he goes to the back post and tips in a puck. As you can see from NHL Edge here, he does all his dirty work around the net. Hyman is 99th percentile in high danger shots and 99th percentile in goals from that area, compared to being 79th percentile in mid-range shots and has a hilarious three shots from the top of the circles or higher all season. Back to point B, the bigger change to me is that Connor McDavid likes to use his speed and attack off the rush more than Matthews or Marner ever did in Toronto. While on the Leafs, Hyman would say win the puck back for his line and then shovel it to Matthews or Marner who would cycle around and look for cross seam passes to one another. Now don't get me wrong, McDavid still plays a puck possession game, but he's a little bit more straight ahead than the Leafs were, attacking downhill more often than curling back and waiting for teammates to pass to. And when Hyman does dig a puck loose for McDavid or even Dreisaitl, they're both a little bit more likely to look for Hyman to get open and feather a pass back to him, whereas in Toronto, a lot of times it was Hyman, Marner, Nylander overpassing to Matthews for a shot on goal. Both teams have amazing players, and it speaks to Hyman's ability that he meshed greatly with each, but personally, I think I think he fits Edmonton a bit better from a stylistic standpoint. Turning 32 years of age this summer, Hyman is no longer a spring chicken in the NHL, but playing alongside some of the best offensive players on the planet while bringing a skill set that works on all four lines of a good hockey team, I think it's safe to say that he'll continue to be a key contributor for the hopefully cup-bound Oilers. I truly wish the game of hockey had more Zach Hymans, guys who you never have to question their effort and guys that you know will never take a shift off. And when you consider the upbringing that Hyman head where lots called him an overdog rather than an underdog due to the resources and opportunities he was given from a young age, it's awesome to watch the blue collar heart and soul style of game that he plays. His Michigan coach Red Berenson once told James Myrtle, he's from a privileged background but he doesn't act like that. When he shows up at the rink he works hard. He's a very low maintenance player. He's a coach's player. He's going to play a blue collar game even though when he walks into the rink he may not look like a blue collar guy. Zach speaks super highly of Red Berenson and his effect on him, and his father Stewart actually credits Berenson as the reason his son made the NHL, saying, Red taught Zach how to play hockey. Zach had been playing hockey his whole life, but he really didn't know how to play hockey until he got to Michigan. Similarly, teammate and close buddy Ryan Nugent Hopkins said he was always a tough guy to play against because he would just work and work and hold on to that puck. He's a strong guy, strong over the puck, and it's really tough to take it off of him. That was kind of what I knew of him, but I think what surprised me is his actual skill level and his ability to make plays and finish like he can. He's a great guy, he's got a great family, and is just a down-to-earth person. So what's the moral of the story here? Hard work. 
plain and simple. It sounds silly to say, but we all know that there are NHL players who don't give it their all night in, night out, and Zach Hyman is not one of those players. He's truly a heart and soul player who leads by example, forechecks with the best of them, gets the puck to his superstar teammates, and even wins awards for his best-selling children's books. Zach Hyman, the super grinder as I like to call him, is one of the cooler stories in the NHL, and I'll be rooting for him to chase the 50 goal mark this season up in Edmonton. Hit that subscribe button for me, comment down below who we should talk about next, and we'll see you next time.